Welcome to our video series, Easy Experiments to Understand a Complicated Earth. This series is produced by Escuela Nacional Preparatoria and the Centro de Geosciencias Campus Juriquilla, UNAM. Are you ready to start? Let's meet each other in 3, 2, 1. Hi guys, and welcome to this experiment, how to pierce a balloon without piercing it. My name is Fernanda, and I got interested in this topic because I found it amazing how a simple and known object like a balloon can challenge some physics laws. But let's discover it together. Well, first of all, put a finger down if you have ever gone to a party and you have been scared by a balloon burst. <laughs> Listening to this noise is not nice, but have you ever asked yourself, why do balloons make this terrible noise? Well, I have the answer here. But first, try to guess. I'll give you three options. A, because balloons like to scare people. B, because the pressure that is inside of it. Or C, because the movement of the air. Well, I'm going to give you time to think. The air in a balloon is at a higher pressure than its surrounding because the elastic tension of the balloon skin is pulling inwards. The high pressure air that was inside the balloon is now free to expand and this creates a pressure wave that our ears hear as a back. But let's prove it by ourselves. Remember that the objective of this experiment is pierce a balloon without bursting it, without making noise, pierce a balloon in silence. We are going to use only two materials, two balloons and a pin. Or okay, we need to inflate both of balloons, but be careful. If you inflate the balloon a lot, it will be burst anyway. So inflate the balloon until it has a medium size, okay? All right. Boundary. Okay, 
Let's play the game. Well, but let's explain what happened. The air you blow into the balloon makes it stretch. The air inside the balloon is pushing in all directions, like this. And the balloon has the higher pressure there will be. When you pierce the balloon through the middle, the material is very stretched, close to its limits. That is why it bursts and if we pierce it in the top part of the balloon, it won't. But let's give an everyday life example. For example, a leaf. Yes, when a material expands and returns to its original shape without changing the form, it is no elastic deformation. Like this. I will pull it the hardest I can. Let's see what happens. Well, nothing happened. Elastic deformation is valid in this elastic leaf. Another example, the earthquake. When we have an earthquake, the surface of the earth suffers an elastic deformation, like this. Let's talk deeply about elastic deformation. It's due a momentary change in shape caused by a seismic waves. The first, what is elasticity? Well, it's the ability to regain original shape when applied force removed. It is called Deforming force. We must remember large forces that applied to a spring, it simply won't be able to stretch further than a certain point. But if the force becomes excessive, the spring will get permanently deformed and may even break if we keep increasing the force. Hence, the spring does not remain has a limit. So, if we're still pulling and goes to the limit, it will be permanent deformation. Like the balloon. The displacement between the particle in the body relative to the reference length. A general deformation of a body can be expressed into the form of x equals 2. F multiply of x, okay, where x is the reference on the, of the position material point in the body. Finally, my friends, remember that the change in shape is called, how it's called? Exactly, deformation. Elasticity is the ability to regain original shape when applied for remove. And the formula to calculate the elastic deformation is x, that x is the position of the material, equals to f multiplied for x. I have been glad to have this conversation with you.
Goodbye and thanks for your attention.